This utterly unique plant may look dead, but some individuals have been alive since before the foundation of Sparta. This is Sparta! While this octopus-like pile of dried out leaves may not be the world's prettiest plant, it's certainly one of the most peculiar. This is Welwitia. Hey, I'm Tasha the Amazon, and you're watching Flora Logic. Today we're talking about one of the oldest plants in the world. This one looks like it's definitely seen some things. It's not easy on the eyes, but that's okay, because today we're going to be looking at the inner beauty of the Welwitia. Welwitia mirabilis is endemic to the arid and semi-arid regions of western Namibia and Angola. It's the only species in its genus, Welwitiaceae. The English name for this ancient plant comes from the first European to describe it back in 1859, Austrian botanist Friedrich Wellwich, but it's more commonly known as tree tumbo. Carbon dating has revealed that some specimens of Welwitia are upwards of 3,000 years old. To give some context, that's 1,000 years before the ancient city of Petra in Jordan was built. And around the time the first colossal stone heads were carved by the ancient Olmec civilization in what is today Mexico. They were sprouting just at the beginning of the Zhu dynasty, the longest running dynasty in Chinese history, which lasted 790 years. These plants were already 300 years old when Homer's Odyssey was written. I told you, these guys have seen some things. Well, which you range in diameter from 60 to 120 centimeters, but only grow upwards about 30 centimeters off the ground. Their claim to fame is that they've got the longest living leaves of any in the plant kingdom. These leaves grow continuously throughout their lives in two ultra-long leathery bands. That's right, that cluster of leaves that make up the Welwitia are just two individual leaves. At their rate of growth, a single leaf can grow 150 meters in a thousand years. The fresh green part of the leaf stays about three meters long. As it grows, the ends wither slowly leaving a long trailing section of dead leaf still attached. The desert winds whip the leaves, causing them to split into ribbons, making this plant look like a dried up desert octopus. These octo-like leaves grow from the large woody stem, which is mostly subterranean. Wawichia is a phreatophyte, meaning it has very deep roots that allow it to access moisture deep below the surface. The tap roots of the Wawichia are said to look like giant radishes. While Wilwichia can live for an obscene amount of time, it can be a challenge for them to reproduce. And seeing a juvenile Wilwichia flopping around in the wind is rare for a couple of reasons. First, a fungus commonly infects the seeds, which affects their viability. It spreads through its namesake, the Wilwichia bug, a local species known to swarm the plant for its nectar. The bug spreads fungus, but it's also thought to be one of the plant's main pollinators. The second reason is that seedlings need more than 55 millimeters of rain to germinate which doesn't happen very often in the Namib Desert, where it only averages 40 millimeters of rainfall a year. As a result, groups of Welwitia that sprouted from the same germination event over the millennia can be found clustered together. Welwitia don't live more than about 100 kilometers from the coast, in what is known as a fog belt. The fog is created when the hot Namib Desert air meets the cold current from the Atlantic Ocean. The condensation from the fog collects on the leaves, which are the perfect shape to direct the moisture down to the roots. During times of drought, zebras and other animals will chew on the plant for moisture. Luckily, the weird and wonderful Welwitia isn't bothered at all. It just keeps on growing. How Welwitia has managed to survive in the desert is still up for debate, since it appears to be hardly thriving in its bone dry home in both numbers and appearance. Some evidence suggests that this plant wasn't always a desert dweller. One study hypothesizes that proto welwitia which existed as far back as the Cretaceous period, 66 million years ago, grew in zones with much more well-balanced moisture. This was long before the tectonic plates drastically changed the landscape of today's Africa, and even before an asteroid killed all the dinosaurs. Evolving in a wetter environment would explain why they need such high levels of moisture to germinate, and why they look so lush when grown in greenhouse conditions, and so dead-looking where they live now. But despite all odds and across thousands of years, this survivor is still holding it down and still captivating us with its tenacity. There's some kind of deep, meaningful life lesson hiding in that heap of brown, dead leaves. Don't you think?
So what should we talk about next? Let me know in the comments and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Ciao. These plants were already 300 years old when Homer's Odyssey was written. I told you, these guys have seen some things. Can we list some of the things they've seen? They have seen butts. They have seen other Welwitchia. They have seen dust and sand and a little bit of rain. They like chicken McNuggets, but they didn't get those until like, they were like 2,700 years old. And those are some things that they have seen. Hey, it's Taz of the Amazon. We're gonna talk about an ugly plant. Here we go. I love ugly plants and I'm here to say I do ugly plant dance every day. Don't put that on the internet. <laughs>